Alright everyone, welcome back and welcome to the winter 2021 semester at Niagara College. And my name is Dr. Amy Prue and I'm the program coordinator for the Culinary Innovation and Food Technology program. And I just happen to be the caretaker for the software that we use for doing nutrition facts tables. So I know that many of you have been studying with Chef Bob Demers in nutrition and have been generating nutrition facts tables in his class and you may now be in other culinary classes where you are going to be using nutrition facts tables for a variety of different assignments or learning outcomes and you might just be curious and I'm a big uh, advocate for just go out and learn something new and you might just want to log into uh, the Genesis R&D software and try doing a variety of different things so that you can learn something new and apply it in your work. Um, now, that said, we have a new way of getting online. And so we are going to introduce you to the splash top version and how to access this software. So at the end of this video, you will be able to log into Esha Genesis R&D using Niagara College's splash top. And I'll show you how to log in, or log in and download and get it. You're going to understand the unique file saving method for splash top. You'll understand the unique file saving method for Esha. Genesis R&D as well, because it's not just save a file, you have very specific techniques that you need to do. You're going to save and reopen some files in Splashtop, and we'll explore uh, just briefly some of the ESHA Genesis R&D software capabilities, and you'll learn the troubleshooting procedure if Splashtop and or ESHA is not working. So, once upon a time, when we didn't have COVID, uh, students would have gone marching off to the Learning Commons in the library, and this is a photo of the Niagara College um, Dan Patterson campus uh, library and it's really unfortunate because it's a great facility and we had a whole bank of computers that you could have walked in but in, a, in essence what we've done with the splash top um, the splash top software in essence acts like a computer lab and so we have 30 licenses for ESHA and in essence you're going to a computer lab you are logging into a computer and it's in a virtual machine type uh, format and from there you can use the software that's available on that central computer. Now the main thing is you have to be really aware of where you are saving your files so that you don't lose those files you can access them again for later assignments. So first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that your now your college OneDrive is initiated and so what you'll need to do is go to OneDrive.com you're going to sign in at the top of the page, type your Niagara College student email address, click next, and use your Microsoft account password and sign in. And um, I'm, <laughs> I always joke when I make these videos because uh, what you will be able to see in your computer is this little, this little thing here where it says OneDrive NC and you'll see all these little clouds coming up, but in essence it just means that you are taking access to the Niagara College OneDrive, and don't make fun of all the tabs that I have open, the internet at my house doesn't work very well. Let me pick the right tab here, and if, if all else fails and you are forgetting how to access your Niagara College OneDrive, ITS Services at Niagara College has a great startup guide for a lot of these different techniques. So you could Google uh, OneDrive Niagara College student and you should be able to find the quick start information. But it's really important that you have access to your Niagara College OneDrive because that's how you're going to be able to save and reaccess your files. Splashtop is integrated with the OneDrive system so you can save directly. And if you've been working in VMware and you had to do some weird um, acrobatics to make it happen, you don't have to do that anymore as long as you've got your OneDrive initiated. So from there, you need to download Splashtop onto your computer. And I'm going to recommend you do it on a computer and not on a phone or tablet because I found that um, even with Splashtop being able to blow up and expand the size of the, of the um, app and the, the graphical user interface on Esha, 
the font is still really small. And if you're trying to do it on a tablet or a phone, it can be really, really small. So I do highly recommend finding either a desktop or a laptop with a screen that's large enough. And some crazy workarounds that we've done um, have been using an HDMI cable to plug in a laptop or a tablet to a television because um, that then increases the monitor size and it makes it easier to see. But do download the Splashdot to your computer so that you have the app on your computer. I work from a PC and if you have if you are working from a Mac, you will have to contact ITS services to find out how you can use Splashdot on Mac. But uh, here we go. Yeah, we've downloaded Splashdot to the computer. And if I click on here, just to walk, walk you through the actual Splashdot remote access and downloads. And this is where you can access the different downloads based off of the different operating, uh, operating system that you are working from. So what's next on our slideshow. I've got too many slideshows open and I'm not going to edit this out because I always joke that we are friends at this point. So now you need to log into Splashtop and it we I'm gonna, I'm actually going oops I'm going to actually log in here. So if I actually log in here I've, I've already gone to that website my.splashtop.com slash computers because I have the single um, user authentication for Niagara College already in. When I type that in, that's going to come up. But if you haven't logged into your Niagara College uh, platform, it will come up and say, please log into Niagara College Microsoft. And in essence, what we've got here is a whole lineup of all these computers as if we've just walked into the library computer lab. And you can pick one of the computers and you can click connect and it will say, Will you please open the software? Yes, please. Please open the software. And it's going to take a moment here, but Splashtop Business is opening and it has logged in with my Niagara College account and we can sing the Jeopardy song. It does take a little bit of time and my internet in rural Niagara is very, very slow. However, now I can log in and I have to imagine this computer is just like one of those uh, computer lab computers in the library. So I'm going to log in using my account and there we go. I'm logging in as if I was in the library at one of those computers and we will have, again, it's Yay for rural internet. That's why I've got so many tabs open. Because once I've opened the tab, I'm really excited to be able to access that web page again at some point. So we can sing the Jeopardy song. Do, 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 do. It is faster than VMware. I can assure you that. I'm going to... The first time you log in, it takes a moment because it's reconfiguring the page. I just clicked up here and... Expand the screen. Almost there. And there we go. Congratulations. Genesis R&D is that wonderful little triangle GF. It does not stand for gluten-free. It stands for Genesis. And I'm going to double click on there and we are in. Congratulations. So I'm just going to back out to my presentation for a moment here and just explain a little bit more about what we're seeing. So, we've downloaded Splashtop, we've logged into Splashtop, we've picked a computer, and we found Genesis R&D. And also Splashtop is sort of like a bit of a Russian doll. VMware, if you worked with it, um, you have to imagine there's a computer inside a computer, and there's uh, it's a virtual computer. And Splashtop just happens to have streamlined many of the different hiccups that we had with VMware. Um, but you have to imagine there's a computer inside a computer and we're accessing it through the internet. And that's why we need to be really careful about how we're saving files. And that's why um, Splashtop is great because it's integrated OneDrive so that when you save your file, it goes straight to your OneDrive and you don't have to worry about where did my file go and disappear. As long as you are saving to your Niagara College OneDrive, it will reappear in the computer outside of the Splashtop. So, do be really, really aware about that. 
So you have activated your NC OneDrive. You are going to save your work files directly on your NC OneDrive. And then before you shut down the splash top, make sure those files have transferred over. It's so much easier than VMware. Why don't we do this uh, and we do one together. So I'm going to expand this out again and I make the screen as big as possible. Let's make a new recipe, just a simple recipe. Um, so let's see, new, okay, there we go. It's just a bit of a leg. My internet is very slow. Let's make a PB sandwich, peanut butter. And we're gonna just say it's one serving. I will have other videos to talk about how do you define serving size based off of uh, food and drugs regulation and uh, reference serving sizes. But uh, let's just make a peanut butter sandwich for now. Oh, bread, white. And there we go, we found bread, white. I'm gonna pick from the USDA uh, SR28 uh, reference select. And I would like to have two slices of bread and some peanut butter. Two ingredients, just for fun. Okay, and I'm going to go not with the peanut butter cup. I'm going to go with Chunky Peanut Butter USDA Standard Reference Legacy 28. Select, and let's do two tablespoons of peanut butter because that just sounds tasty. And if I click on View Label, I realize that I have a lot of different edits that I need to do in terms of modifying my allergen declaration because all those allergens aren't there. I should be going in and doing some edit label and uh, changing the allergen statement on these different functions up here. But I've got my uh, two slices of white bread and two tablespoons of peanut butter. Looks great. I am going to move ahead with this label. So if I want to save it, I can, if I have the label view open, I can do a print to PDF and that will save a PDF copy. And this is really useful for uh, teachers who are trying to do their marking, but it's also a useful thing if you are creating a binder for um, documenting recipes and having that available perhaps within food service. So I can save this if I go to my OneDrive. And now there's, hey, there's all my files for my OneDrive and I can save it in one of these, um, uh, save it in Capstone just for fun. Label PB sandwich, save. And it's going to save a PDF file for me. Okay, fantastic. Now, something else, see, and now it's come up as a PDF file. I, I gotta go back to, um, ex, or not Excel, to Genesis here. If I right click on the actual nutrition facts label here, I can export an image file. And so I can export to file just that graphic. And so now I can save it as a bitmap or a JPEG. And these are different graphic files. And so let's say I want to send different graphics out to a graphic designer who's designing my label. This is the file format that I'd like to save in. So I can save that. Export succeeded. Now the other piece of the puzzle is if I want to save to file, this is important. When you close Splashtop, your files will disappear. I can save my ESHA data file so that I can reopen it at a later point. Maybe I want to have a peanut butter and jam sandwich as my version two on my product development. I can reopen my peanut butter sandwich and now adding jam to my original recipe is going to be just as easy as opening up the old peanut butter file, adding jam and saving again. So I'm saving it as an EXL ESHA data file now. So save, export succeeded. Now what I should do is minimize the splash top, minimize the splash top and make sure that those files have come through to my capstone. There we go, see? This is my actual laptop and I can see that I've got peanut butter sandwich Excel, peanut butter sandwich label, and a graphic file here available to me and those were saved today. Fantastic, that's the beauty of the OneDrive system and Splashtop is able to integrate that for us. It's so much easier than VMware. Now, let's say I closed out my ESHA and I'm all done. Let's say,
for some reason, I needed to open a file that I had been working on before. This is this is this is weird. Where I need to open from file, and so I'm going to open from file that EXL format, and now I've got my documents back. Beautiful thing about VMware or not VMware, that <laughs> splash top is that it's integrated right into our drives. So we don't have to be fiddling around. As long as you're using your Niagara College OneDrive, it works brilliantly and you can reopen those files. So do remember that when you're opening a file that you need to go to open from file on a new recipe. So I'm going to close it from here. And I'm actually just going to minimize it for now. When you're all done, do make sure to Click on the disconnect button at the top of the screen and you'll see right here it says disconnect and that means that you have closed out the splash top properly and someone else can then log into that same, um, that same server. Please make sure that you do that. All right, let's minimize here and I'm gonna minimize the splash top and go back to my presentation. So it's so much easier. So we, just in summary, we talked about the different types of files that you can save. So you can save a PDF label file. I often do recommend for students to save PDF spreadsheet files, and that's where you can, um, you can see the contribution of different nutrients. And it's really useful if you want to increase or decrease different nutrients within that formulation. You can see which ingredient contributed the nutrient the most or the least. You can save a graphic format file, and you can save that EXL file. That's the Genesis database file, and you can only open it in Genesis, but it is such a useful file format. And uh, sometimes teachers will ask for it as part of an assignment because they'll actually want to open up your um, Genesis file and see what you did in your work. So uh, remember, you are opening from file or importing that file into your database. You're not trying to just open the recipe and many students complain, I can't get it to open again. Have you imported it or have you opened from file? So last but not least, if you have trouble when working with Genesis, do make sure to take a screenshot. And so if you can do a print screen and save that graphic file or even just as simple as photograph it with your smartphone, save the error message that you see and then send that to your instructor. They will communicate with me and will uh, contact ITS so that we get the problem solved as fast as possible. With VMware, we did have a lot of bugs and we're optimistic that Splashtop is going to be so much better. But um, if you are seeing problems, don't just turn off the software and say, well, Azure doesn't work, that's a stupid assignment. No, we can get it fixed, but you need to communicate with us. So please send a screenshot or a photograph of the error message that you see and send it to, to your instructor and the instructors will communicate with me or ITS and we will get it fixed as fast as possible. And we do understand that this is really powerful software and we want you to be using it. We'll be, we'll be understanding. If you sent that email and said the software is not working, we'll be more flexible with deadlines and timelines that you need for completing your work. All right, so have fun using Esha, and I'm going to have more videos in the future about how you can use all the different features in Esha for doing labeling and for doing health claims validation and all sorts of different fun features that Esha can contribute in terms of uh, better product design. All right, take care, and we'll talk to you soon.